Okay, so here is a giant bin of face palettes. They're all kind of crammed in here. So what's in here are blush palettes, highlighter palettes, contour palettes, and then palettes that are kind of a combination of any of those three. So contour highlight or blushing contour. So I'm going to kind of go through these by palettes that are all one thing. So contour, then blush, then highlight. And then we'll come in and we'll talk about the palettes that have multiple uses kind of all in one palette. So I'm gonna get these organized, we'll lay them out, and we'll go through them one by one. Okay, so before I get started on these three, which are technically part of this declutter, I wanted to quickly mention this pure uh, glow together bronzer. It is the size of your face, it's huge. And I actually forgot about it because it's so big that I actually had it in my face palettes drawer. I am hoping now that I can fit this in my bronzer drawer and I'm going to do that. This is a beautiful bronzer. These three strips are matte, these three are shimmer. You can blend them together. It should have been part of my bronzer declutter from my last video, but I missed it because it was in this drawer. So, so these are these three are technically my bronzer contour palettes. Now, I will be totally honest, I tend not to like bronzer contour palettes a lot because I find a good portion of the shades I don't use. So for me, I would rather have individuals of things that I'm really happy with rather than buying palettes that I can only use a handful of shades for. So I haven't bought things like the Anastasia kit that everybody loves for that reason. I did, however, break that rule when I bought the Shade and Light Contour from Kat Von D. Here's the problem that I have with it. I only ever use these three shades. I use this to contour and this to bronze and they are very pretty. This is just too deep for me. It comes off looking very deep and dark, and I have absolutely no use for this sort of orange shade, and this yellow one, this banana shade, still looks strange underneath my eye. The texture of these is lovely. I'm just having a hard time justifying a palette this big, simply because I only use half of it. Sad face, this is going bye bye Next up is one that I know I'm keeping. This is the Fiona Styles. This is her light medium sheer sculpting palette. Now, this is one where if you have been, if you are fair and you have been struggling to find contour shades that are not too ashy, that are not too gray, but are still light enough, this is where you need to look. These powders blend incredibly well. This is probably the lightest contour shade you're going to find anywhere on the planet. Definitely see it's got a very pretty sort of cool undertone. I frequently mix the first shade and the second shade together. These powders are buildable. They're incredibly, they're soft and uh, easy to work with, but they don't kick up a ton of powder. And if I really want to go ham or use this, I could use this as a bronzer before, highly recommend these. And then they also make a medium deep one if you are obviously deeper complected. Last one here is from City Color Cosmetics is their contouring effects on the go palette. This is a palette that was made specifically for five below. So if you have a five below near you, they pretty much carry this all the time. I very much enjoyed these two bottom shades. I also thought these were very pretty, sort of light natural highlighters. Very, very natural, very pretty, no shimmer, no glitter in them. The powders were actually very soft, easy to work with, very blendable. I'm gonna swatch these on the back of my wrist. See, once again, I just, I have a hard time keeping palettes when I know I don't think I can wear all the shades. I think this is a phenomenal palette. And if you, these shades appeal to you, I think if you're a medium skin tone, you should probably just buy this palette. I think you will really get some enjoyment out of the different tones of bronzers and contour shades they have there. The highlights are stunning. I just think there's probably some friends of mine that will love this more than me. So I think I'm gonna pass this out a lot. Okay, so here are my blush palettes and Z palette slash magnetic palettes. I wanted to put them in here because that's kind of how I use them. Let's start with this one because it's kind of a mixed bag here. Um, this is actually the contour shade from Sephora that I said I was going to keep. This is actually where I store it for the most part is in here. This is a highlighter. I don't even remember where the heck that's from. Yeah, and it's too gold. That's gonna go. Okay, so. 
That sort of mild distraction aside, these are my four MAC blushes. This first sheared shade here is MAC Melba. It's a very sort of pretty peachy terracotta shade. I'm swatching these very heavy, by the way. They will blend out much sheerer on skin, on skin tones as well, or on my skin rather. This next one is Stay By Me, and it is a lighter matte peach shade. This bottom matte shade is MAC Pink Cult. It's a very pretty sort of mauve pink shade. I love this shade in the wintertime. This is a very popular shade. This is MAC Margin. This is the only shimmer one I own from them. And this is beautiful in the summertime. I love that. So those are my four MAC blushes. I do really like all of them. I think I'm going to keep them. Counting this as one palette, technically I probably should have done these blushes um, as individual blushes during my blush declutter. But yeah, it is what it is. This here is my Urban Decay Gwen Stefani blush palette. This packaging is probably the most gorgeous packaging that Urban Decay has ever, ever, ever put out. The colors in here are really up my alley. I really enjoy all of these and I just think this is probably the palette that I will end up keeping for sure. So let me swatch these here. This top shade is Cherry. I also don't think you can get these shades individually from Urban Decay so it's not like I could even get these on their own. The next shade is Easy, then Angel which is a good topper, but it also can be used on its own. It could be a highlighter for someone with deeper skin tone. Lo-Fi, which is a very natural sort of matte nude blush. This is the shade Hush. This is probably my favorite in the palette. Sort of that peachy gold color. And then DC, which is a really interesting sort of duochrome peach pink shade how you can see the duochrome of that. So I really like this blush palette. I'm gonna hang on to it. All right, we're gonna save these for the end. These are my Makeup Revolution palettes. Let's talk about this little Baby Z palette with all these little random stripes in it. So this is actually de-potted blushes from CoverGirl. These are like the $2.99 blushes that look like they're in cheapy packaging. I just depotted them and put them in here. They are on the sheer side, as you can see. You do have to build them up. This is one where the swatches don't look as good as the product itself on the skin, but I just don't think I use these a ton and I think I will use this little baby palette for other things. So I do think I'm gonna pass this one along. This, I know I'm keeping, this was came out at Christmas time from Tarte. It is their Color Wheel Blush Palette. They do these kinds of uh, Christmas time blush palettes. It was so pretty. I actually bought it immediately, sent it to my sister. I guess technically this is, there are two highlighters in there as well as blushes. These are blushes that are not part of their everyday collection. This is probably my favorite uh, palette to travel with because it is fairly compact. It's pretty easy to fit in my makeup bag and it gives me every blush combo I could possibly ever think of. I am not going to swatch all of these here. This is not something you guys can get anyway, so I keep this not so much for recommendations for the blog, but as much for my personal travel use. So, so here are three blush palettes from Makeup Revolution. This one with the clear lid um, is the Blush Palette Goddess. The bottom row is all matte blushes and the top row are shimmer shades that can either be used as toppers or used as uh, potentially highlighters, to be honest. So that is that one. These two are, this is Sugar and Spice, and this is Hot Spice. These are all actually great blushes. The pigmentation on these is great. Let me just grab a few here so you can see what I'm talking about. So this is a very nude blush. The formula is great, it blends out, it lasts a long time. Uh, let's grab a pink one just to show you how intense these can actually get. Plummy one here, it's sort of a pale pink. With these two palettes, there are two shimmer shades down here on the end, and then with these, like I said, there's four. I'm torn on these because there's shades in all of these that I like, but I think keeping all three of them is just a little bit extreme. I think I'm gonna pass along the shade Hot Spice just because I feel like this is probably has the most similar shades here. I will never use this bright, bright red shade. I know that. Even blend it out on my skin. It's just 
too ding dong intense. Um, but I really do like these two nudes and these are probably the four most wearable blush shades. I have nude blushes that I like better and I have brighter sort of pink shades I like better. So I think I'm gonna pass along sugar and spice. Sorry for me being all rambly here as I try and mentally process what I want here. So I'm gonna pass on sugar and spice as well. And I'm just going to keep the blush palette goddess. These are the palette highlighters that I have. This is the e.l.f. Illuminating Palette. These are powders that are incredibly subtle, almost more like hourglass ambient lighting powders. Um, they do provide some glow for the skin. It is a very natural glow. This is more of a bronze topper for me. I do really like this palette. I can use it both as face powders and then also as very subtle highlighters to just lift the skin. So I do like this. I am going to hang on to this. One that I'm keeping is from Flower Beauty. They are a champagne, a pink, and a gold highlighter that actually have a really nice pearlized metal hint to them. And although this is a gold, it is a gold that I still feel like I can pull off or mix together with these shades. I was shocked that I could wear all four of these shades being as fair as I am. The texture of these is beautiful, but it does let tend itself to break if you drop it or if you were to travel with it in a bag. I don't know how well it would do, but I am also going to keep this guy. This is the next strobe of Genius palette, kind of like the contour palettes that have lots of shades that I can't wear. This also is that way with me. And the texture of these is lovely. I've heard a lot of beauty gurus say that this is one of their favorite palettes and I see why. I mean, the texture is great. That's a stunning pearl white, but this one is too dark for me. That one's too dark for me. I just feel like there's too many shades in here that don't work for me. I think if you are a medium skin tone, this would be an amazing palette to have. But for me, I just don't reach for it because the majority of the shades are not right for my skin tone. So this came in a BoxyCharm from the brand Vintage by Jessica Liebskind. This is a very pretty one. This is one that I've not really played around much. I've just swatched it. It's been in my two try pile. And I feel like these shades are just gonna be too deep on my skin. They're pretty, but they're just too deep for me. So I'm also going to pass this guy along. This is technically a Catrice eyeshadow palette in Candy Warhol. And what I realized as soon as I got it was that, huh, you are a crappy, crappy palette for eyes. You get absolutely no tonal, really tonal variation on your eyes but you are incredibly pretty as highlighters. These are very natural pearly highlighters and I actually really like the different subtle tones that I get in this. I'm gonna hang on to this one. All right, here is another palette from Fiona Styles. This is her Light Illusion Prism palette. I believe she did a light and a medium version of this. This is one where I use this as a bronze topper and then these two as highlights. They're very subtle. Um, very natural. I like how they blend out. There's pretty negative reviews on this because people have gotten so used to bright metallic highlighters, but I actually find this is a great everyday palette. I like to travel with this one as well. It's very compact. It's beautiful metal packaging, has a nice magnetic closure, nice sized mirror at the top. So I'm, I frequently travel with the contour and highlight palettes from Fiona Styles. Let's talk about these two kind of in tandem. Um, this is from Ricky. Ricky's is a New York City retailer and they do a subscription box. Don't think it gets a ton of hype out there. The texture of these highlighters is actually really pretty, but once again, I'm not going to wear all of these shades, but I thought for perchance that I might want to compare it or combine it with this guy and make my own palette. Now this is the Bella Pierre Cosmetics glowing palette. This is interesting because it actually has quite a few shades that almost could be bronzers and or high or, uh, blushes on me. But then these two are too dark. So I'm torn right now. I have a lot of highlighters. Am I going to reach for these even if I make a very pretty palette that is all shades that I would wear? I think the answer for that is no. Even though these are stunning, I have nothing against these highlighters. I just don't think I'm going to reach for them. I am going to pass both of these along. These are two Anastasia glow kits. This is in the shade Gleam. 
which is unfortunately no longer available. Just have out right now Sun Dipped. I believe that is the only glow kit that you can actually uh, get anymore. As you can see by looking at these, there are some shades in here that are too dark for me. These two I knew were gonna be too dark for me and I thought, oh, I'm just gonna wear them as a eyeshadow. No, I'm not. Thing over here, there's just a couple that I'm not quite as sure about. This one is almost more of a blush for me. It's like a duochrome sort of orangey peach color. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swatch the shades that I think, I'm gonna swatch all these shades and I'm gonna actually combine down and make one palette here. And then, so I'll keep four of these and I'm gonna declutter four, but I am going to keep the four that I think will work for my skin tone. So there are all of these swatches there. So now I have kind of a light and a dark kit. Keeping this one, passing this one along. So let's get this big beast out of the way because it's taking up so much space. This is the Cheekathon palette from Benefit. I bought this last year. There's a new version out this year. It has full-size versions of Rock Couture, um, Benefit Hula Bronzer, Coralista, Dallas, and Dandelion. I love this. Um, it's a little bulky. I've honestly thought about potentially popping this out and deep potting it and putting it in a Z palette or some other magnetic palette just because it is such a bulky piece, but it's cute. So I don't know. We'll see how this fits in the drawer. This is beautiful. This is the Becca Jaclyn Hill palette that was limited edition. This is, I mean, it's probably some of the most beautiful packaging of anything that I own. I can't wear this palette. <laughs> This is way too gold, this is way too dark, so this is Prosecco Pop and Champagne Pop. They don't work for me. I have this Flower Child one already. This is a little dark and this is a little bright, so I hate this, but I think there's someone in my friends and family with a deeper skin tone that will get a lot of love out of this, so I am gonna pass this along. I'm keeping that is newer to my collection. This is from Tarte, and it's gonna show every fingerprint ever. Awesome. This is the Tarte Don't Be Afraid to Dazzle. This is their Double Duty Beauty Contour and Highlight Palette. I just got this. I used it for the first time today, and so far, I really like it. The bronzer shade is very cool toned, but not ashy and blended out really well on my cheek. The highlight wasn't too dark. I could definitely see myself traveling with this. This one is staying. Similar vein, definitely staying in my collection as well, is absolutely filthy and needs to be washed. Oh, it's so sad. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow in the lighter version. They make a deeper version as well. I love this thing. It's so pretty. The highlighter is this beautiful champagne. The bronzer is cool toned enough. You can use it as kind of bronzer contour in one. This is one that's almost always in my travel bag. It is pricey, but I can see why. A, the packaging is beautiful rose gold metal. And then on top of that, the products themselves just perform. There's no dusty kickback. They blend beautifully on the skin. They last all day. So <sighs> if you can bring yourself to splurge or put it on a Christmas wish list, I really do like this palette a lot. Okay, this is the Fiona Styles, our multi-dimensional color palette. I love this. It's cardboard. It has a nice mirror for travel on the back or on, in the lid rather. It's got two highlighters, a bronzer and three blushes. I can wear all three of the blushes. This highlighter and this bronzer, this is the only one I can't, but this is a beautiful all over lid color. I have pictures and swatches of this on the blog, which I will link below. They blend effortlessly. The pigment is great. It's not too much, but it's buildable. It lasts all day. So this is a winner in my book. Talk about this little baby sleek makeup guy. Um, this is one that I ordered off of Amazon, I believe. This is their Face Form Contouring and Blush Palette in Light, and I haven't tried this yet. So I feel like I need to before I can comment on it. They feel nice to the touch. So it's got a nice bronzer, a really pretty sort of peachy bright highlighter, and then this sort of NARS Orgasm uh, bright coral pink shade for blush. It's definitely a shimmery blush with a gold shift. Um, so yeah, I'll keep you posted. This is the Mary Lumina, this is the Manizer sister. So this has Mary Luminizer, Cindy Luminizer, and Betty Luminizer. Um, I think these were originally intended to be highlighters, all three. Obviously I can only wear that as a highlighter and I already have it in a full size. I bought this because I really thought, oh, I could travel with, with both of these. Um, but to be totally honest, 
I don't see myself using these as blush toppers or bronzer toppers, which is how I'd have to use them. And I think somebody else might really like to try these. So for as cute as this Ding Dong packaging is, I think it is time it finds a better home. Okay, so these are two Maybelline uh, palettes. This, let's talk about this one. This one came out first. This is the Master Contour. So it has a contour blush and highlight. I just got around to buying this, I'm not gonna lie. And I actually bought this because of my newfound love for this. We'll get to that in a minute. I've not tried this yet, uh, so I can't comment on it other than swatches that say that it feels nice and that the highlighter looks really pretty. One that I know I am keeping is this. This is the Maybelline Blush uh, palette. It had three beautiful blushes and a stunning, I mean, ugh, gorgeous highlight that's sort of that pink champagne color. I love this. I love all three colors. Even that deep one is can be blended out and isn't too, too intense when it is blended out on my skin, as you can see there. So if you go in with a light hand and you blend, you just kind of get this nice sort of mauve flush color. All right, this is the last of it. So let's talk about, let's talk about these two. This is the L'Oreal Infinite Pro Contour in light. And this is the Catrice Contour Palette in Ashy Radiance. Uh, to me, the purpose of these two palettes is exactly the same. It has a highlighter and a contour shade. I will say that this is more ashy toned in the L'Oreal one. Sorry guys, battery died mid conversation. I'm not sure where it cut off. Um, I was just going to say, I like the highlighter in here a lot better. This one is a lot more gold and this one's a lot more just natural sort of champagne. And then I like the bronzer or the contour color in this one as well. This one's a lot stiffer and it's a lot more gray toned. I don't know, I just, I prefer this one over it and it's cheaper. So Catrice for the win and I'm gonna pass along the L'Oreal one. This little Rimmel palette is the 02 Coral Glow. This is probably the closest dupe that I have found shade and texture wise to the Charlotte Tilbury um, Filmstar Bronze and Glow. So if you wanna get a sense for what that looks and feels like on the skin, I'd recommend picking this up in the drugstore. I think the texture is a little nicer on theirs and this is a little more shimmery, not a ton. But I really do like this one. It's easy for travel and I'm definitely hanging on to it. In a similar boat, or similar vein rather, is this Sephora Microscope micro smooth baked sculpting trio in light clear. The bronzer is a little orange. The blush is very pretty. The highlight is very nice. It can be a little difficult to pick up the bronzer and the blush evenly. I don't know, it's just not my favorite. If I was gonna keep a trio or travel with a trio, I would be grabbing for the Rimmel every time over this one. So, and I believe it's a little cheaper. So I'm gonna pass that one along. All right, let's talk e.l.f. palettes. We'll get rid of this little guy first. This is a matte bronzer and blush. I love it. Bronzer is a really neutral, nice tone. Uh, the blush is very pretty. I think this is just beautiful quality. I really love it. This is the shade Fiji Matte. Think of all of the blush contour or blush bronzer combos they do, this is probably their best one. So I'm gonna hang on to that. All right, let's look at these. Ah, okay, this is their contour palette. I believe they do a dark one as well. This has a highlighter. This is kind of a setting powder, a bronzer and a contour powder. I love this thing for travel. This is one of those ones that I feel like you could do a whole face of makeup off of. You could do a complete eye look. You could do most of your face. I just really, really like this thing. But I love this guy. I'm definitely not parting with it. This is also the same palette. Ha ha, I own two of them. I'm a moron. Keep one and pass one along. This is part of their Beautifully Bare line. This is their Total Face palette. And inside you've got two sort of peachy pink blushes and then a highlight and a bronze shade here. I really like all of these. The highlighter is one of those kind of natural skin tone highlighters. The blushes are very pretty and creamy. They are kind of a matte, they are matte blushes, not kind of, they are matte blushes. And then the bronzer um, is also very soft, easy to blend. I like this palette for travel as well. So I think if 
you haven't picked up this palette, uh, you should. I think it's probably one of Elf's better uh, formulated and uh, prettier palettes as well. So here is what I'm keeping on the left and here's what I'm decluttering on the right. I have kept 22 palettes and I'm decluttering 14. So I'm getting rid of 39% of my collection. <laughs> Husband's home, which I don't think is bad. Um, doesn't surprise me. I travel and use a lot of these face palettes. So I feel like I'm keeping things that I really love and enjoy. And I'm getting rid of things that I don't use a whole lot. So once again, if you guys like this declutter videos, make sure to check out the other ones that I have decluttered. And I look forward to seeing you guys in my next declutter video.